<laughs> so about uh, six months ago, back in April of this year, I kind of set on this journey to make a like one axis gimbal camera stabilizer using Betaflight's built-in cam stabe function. So just a few final conclusions on the, the g servo gimbal thing. Now, obviously the hardware aspect of this is not working right. It's also opening up another kind of set of possibilities where when the drone is in a high bank maneuver, it's not uh, wasting away image by forcing real steady to crop in. For that reason, I'm very excited about the possibility of the servo gimbal, but I don't quite know what the next step is. And the results were kind of hit and miss. The servos that I used, even when I got like nice quality servos, still kind of like stuttered and it didn't exactly follow the camera stay function the way that I wanted to. And I, I kind of abandoned the project. Like it was, it was cool. It had some potential, but I didn't have anything to do. Right at that time, a guy reached out on Instagram called uh, Jay Mustache. I'll put the link to his Instagram below. And he was like, yo, I've been doing exactly what you're doing, and I used this product, the Quark 2 Gimbal. Well, actually, at that time, it was the Quark 1. Now the Quark 2 is out. But it's this stabilizer for your GoPro that keeps the horizon level no matter what you do. You can see I'm kind of trying to get it to go, and it's... <laughs> It's still always upright, and it just has, uses the normal like GoPro mounting things so that when the drone is tilting left or right, it keeps it stabilized. So this was back in April. I purchased this that day. Um, I did not get sent this for review or anything like that. I just bought it, and I then waited and waited and waited, and the, the pandemic times made tr shipping tricky that finally this actually showed up, and the first one they sent me was broken, so I sent it back, and now I've got a working Quark 2 gimbal, and it's this one-axis gimbal that just keeps the horizon level no matter what you're doing. <laughs> it looks so funky. But, uh, so the whole point of this video is evaluating whether or not this gimbal uh, serves a place in potentially uh, assisting stabilization in FPV uh, to make a, a more like a, I'm like a cinematic whatever look a stabilized look and in a, in a one that is stable on the horizon so I'm gonna use this to eliminate roll from the drone combine it with real steady and maybe we'll make some magic all right that's plenty of talk but let's actually get out and go try something the uh, cork is mounted on the drone. We've got the th Insta360 looking at the cork so we can kind of get a picture in picture of what the stabilizer is doing. And we're going to go to a spot and do some four different kinds of flights. One with hyper smooth, real steady, no smoothing, and then also fixed mount. So we can kind of compare them all side by side. Really excited to see what that looks like. I think it's going to be pretty awesome in terms of what it could potentially benefit us for this sort of style of filming. And uh, yeah, so let's get over to the field and check it out. What's the point in even having something like this? Like, why would I just want to stabilize one axis? Is there an actual point in that? And you know, that's a good question. That's kind of the thing that I've been struggling with the most about ever having even considered doing a one axis gimbal setup like this. It's so fun to just watch it twist around like that. You know, if you think about it, there's a lot of different potential for it. One of the things that's weirdest about FPV, and sometimes a good thing about FPV, is that there's always Dutch angles, right? As you tilt the quad, as you fly the quad, it's always gonna be kind of sideways. And while that's fine for making YouTube videos and doing fun stuff with drones and showing off FPV itself, it doesn't always suit the story that you're trying to tell. And in fact, it can be a little bit distracting from the story that is trying to be told. So by just stabilizing the roll axis, which is kind of the weirdest one in terms of like what people are used to seeing, you're gonna be able to bring more people into like what these things can do. I mean, obviously you're still gonna have some tilt, some change on the, on the pitch, but that's okay. And then when you yaw, it's just gonna yaw like normal. But our yaw is already pretty well fixed and we don't, I mean, we pitch a lot, but it's easier to control your pitch than it is your roll axis because when you roll, you have so much that you have to do to be able to control where you're going. Whereas with pitch, you can use throttle to kind of change speeds or altitude without having to dip the nose too bad. 
So the applications for this to tell stories, whether that's chasing something, because you know, as you go through a corner, it's gonna kind of bank and it's gonna keep up with stuff like that, or to you know just do cine whoop style shots is really good. Now, I know Real Steady has the ability to stabilize on the horizon, but you have to crop in on the picture, the image is available. And we are already using such small sensors with the GoPro that sacrificing more resolution to get that horizon stabilized mode is it's starting to get detrimental. So having a stabilizer plus a hyper smooth or a real steady is going to make for some really awesome opportunities. So what I'm going to do today is film it in four different modes in no particular order. That's hyper smooth with the gimbal, that's real steady with the gimbal, that's no stabilization with the gimbal, and then fixed. And we're going to be able to kind of look at all of those shots side by side and see kind of the difference in the perspective. It's going to be just different styles within FPV. Now, my biggest fear for the day, I've only got three extra of these props and only one of these gimbals, so I really don't want to crash, so I might be taking it a little bit easy on my flying style for the day. I hope that's okay with you. I'm doing this on the 10-inch Project 399 Super G. It does not need to be this drone. I just picked it because it looks so cool with that gimbal on there. Uh, I've definitely flown this amount of payload on a 5-inch just fine. I just wanted to fly this because I had it ready, and, and then I can also do two cameras more easily than I can on that. So hopefully we don't crash. This is the only drone I've brought with me today. Uh, I do have the extra props, but only three of them, so if I break a certain two props, I won't be able to get it in the air anyway. So let's get this together and get in the air. seemed all right and it landed and I didn't break the props and why are you all cockeyed? <laughs> We've got our hyper smooth flight done now we're gonna switch over to new smoothing. So we finished up no stabilization whatsoever turned on on the camera and now we're switching into real steady mode. So we'll be able to do both horizon level real steady and uh, traditional real steady. We'll try to keep them roughly at the same settings. It's also just about starting to rain so we gotta keep moving. <laughs> For some reason one of my motors is deciding to spin backwards. That was horrifying. I guess maybe some water had gotten on that lens or on the because there's a reverse pad on those APD ESCs. 
It's a little sketch. So that finishes up all of the stabilized flights. So now I'm just gonna take the GoPro off, put it straight mounted on the drone like a normal GoPro would be, and that will be our last test for this.
All right, that's it for fixed mount. So we've done all of these individual flights. Let's take that back and look at the footage and see how each of those compares to each other as we learn more about it. I'm excited to see how each of those different shots look now that we've played around with mounting it differently, using different kinds of stabilization in combination with the Quark 2 gimbal. Pretty cool. And perfect timing because it just started raining. Let's get out of here. So I finally had a chance to take a look at some of this footage. And there's some things that I really, really like and some things that really surprised me slash I didn't like at all. So bear with me because this is on like proxy files. So what you're seeing here doesn't represent the final quality of what this video looks like. You have to go back and kind of look at like the normal parts of the video. Uh, but the first thing I want to start with was no smoothing, but on the gimbal. So there's no hyper smooth, no real steady going, but the there is the drone the thing is on the gimbal so if we play this back it's all over the place like the whole thing is just oh, 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 oh. jiggling around which you know it's probably it's mostly my fault because of the tune like it just wasn't quite set up right i've not tuned this drone but like you can just see like just watch the edges especially like right in this area you'll see just like because the drone is just bouncing around and i mean it's also really mount, mounted quite high above the um, you know, prop line and there's, it was a little bit windy on the day that I went and filmed this. So like, yeah, there's some stuff that's going on that you know, maybe it deserves to be a little bit weird, but I was really surprised at how bad this looked, a little bit disappointed at that. Now, that being said, we have these stabilization tools at our disposal. So if we skip forward into hyper smooth on the gimbal, once we get into hyper smooth, things start to change dramatically. Like, it's not perfect. You can see, for example, when you're making a right bank turn, the camera still kind of lists a little bit to the left. Like, it doesn't quite turn all the way. Um, it's a little bit weird. See, like, you can see, like, the horizon is a little higher over here than it is over here, even though we're in a really dramatic right angle turn. So that's a little bit weird with HyperSmooth, but I, I don't hate it, right? It's it, I'm very impressed with how good HyperSmooth plus this gimbal looks because it's it's it it almost looks like real steady out of the box, you know, without ever doing anything other than just mounting it on a gimbal and flying with HyperSmooth on. And it just it looks really good. There's some little kind of weird twitchies, like if you kind of look back here, you see it kind of right here, just kind of is a little bit. It's kind of searching. But, I mean, if you didn't have, if you didn't afford Real Steady, which I guess this gimbal is 200 and something dollars, and Real Steady is only $100, and you can usually find it for like 75, so maybe that doesn't make sense, but, you know, it's, it's interesting. But here's where the magic is. This is where, this was the whole purpose of this video for me to, to play around with and test with, was gimbaled with Real Steady on, with Horizon Lock on. So, Again, that Dutch angling that we get with FPV is fine, but it's not always the look that people want. You want that kind of Mavic look, the Inspire look, the gimbaled look, but you don't want to sacrifice having a 3-axis gimbal or having a gimbal that can't keep up with the, the dramatic combination of FPV. So if we gimbal it to be locked as close to the horizon as possible, then put real steady on top of that to smooth out all of the other artifacts of drone flight and then turn on horizon lock mode you're going to have the most picture available from real steady but not sacrifice the actual cropping so watch this clip and you'll see what i'm talking about it's got that kind of mavic feel where it's everything is level and smooth and nice and you're just kind of cutting through even though the drone is freaking you know at a 90 degree angle right here look at this you know, drone is at a you know 45, 50 degree right angle, but the horizon is nice and locked and stable. You got that motion blur. You've got that look 
that I think people want to see that doesn't just include uh, freaking you know all of the Dutch angles of drone play, and it just looks so good to me. And then take that and compare it to the roughly the same shot with real steady horizon lock fixed on the drone. So instead of adding in the extra step of putting the cork gimbal in there, now take this and look at what it looks like with just the GoPro fixed to the drone with horizon lock. And notice how much this punches in and zooms in and how awkward that is compared to how it looks on the gimbal. So let me play this. Whoosh, super zoomed in. Take a right around the dumpster, punch his way in, all you can see is that tree. Now go back and look at it with uh, the gimbal. Wide, beautiful, not punching in. We don't have, we're not at like 480p worth of resolution left. Everything is still nice and close to 4K or 2.7K as I was shot it. Then you look at this, brap, <laughs> just so punched in. It's just a completely different feel, like this manic, weird looking thing compared to like the wide angle smoothness. So I've got that right, a more dramatic version of that kind of track, uh, here on the next clip. So this is gimbaled horizon lock. Get this really high intense action, still fairly wide uh, cam camera. Obviously that's not like, you know, it's not a shot that you're gonna put in a movie or whatever, but like it, you know, it's, it's FPV flight. It's dramatic FPV flight. Right here. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Nice wide, keeping all of that resolution. Real steady is still able to figure out. And then cut to fixed angle. What? <laughs> it's a completely different shot. Like, it doesn't make any sense now. It's so narrow. You're down to like 480p of resolution because you've cropped in so much to get that footage to work. And it's, it's dramatic. It's a huge, huge difference. And, you know, again, I'm not saying that, like, one way is better than the other. One is cheaper or whatever. And, you know, people don't always necessarily want the look of it being gimbaled. But I think that having the ability to do one or the other is, is a huge, is an important option. And I think real steady combined with a one axis gimbal gets you really close to that end result. I think, I think there's a style, there's a purpose to being able to provide that shot to clients. So, I mean, the whole video comes down to, you don't really need it. You can still get away without it, but the power of having the one axis gimbal in place of, uh, or in addition to the ability that real study has to get that horizon lock mode without having the boo, 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 warping effect of real study, I think is an extremely powerful combination for clients or for stories that don't want the Dutch angling of the gimbal on the drone or of the non gimbal on the drone rather. So I think it's a really interesting thing that we have been able to explore. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. What do you think in the description? Please leave a comment. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, join the channel as a member so I can keep making videos like this, all those dumb YouTube things and stay flying.